we're in Los Angeles. And so this should give you an idea of what the city-like areas of Los Angeles would traditionally look like before it was blown over with concrete. At the moment, we are in talks about the environment and um, how we've got to where we're at and um, how we could possibly reverse it and make, make it a green place once again. A lot of folks are afraid of things like fire. Unfortunately, it's, it's the conditioning of city life where we're taught to be afraid of the animals, we're taught to be afraid of, of the natural life, but in reality, um, we are nature. So I think the idea is um, getting back to that and what that would look like would also include um, the cultural burns. We live in a time where everything needs a permit. Everything needs permission. If I am just to go and practice my culture in, let's say, a, a cultural burn, I can likely go to jail, get fined, get arrested. And so it's, it's mending relationships or creating uh, relationships with our agencies. When we can teach these agencies that our way of life is actually a good preventative measure, uh, to these scary, overgrown fires, then I, I think we can do some good work together. You know, our relationship with plants is so deep. It has to be reciprocal, right? We have to ask permission before we take anything. We have to offer a gift. Um, we have to let the plant know what it is that we need so that it can help us. And we need to make sure that we don't take too much from any one plant or any one area. The challenge that we as Tongva people and also other California tribal people who do not have a land base, the challenge that we face is the fact that all of the lands that are so key and important to us that are still natural belong to somebody. We're not able to access it, at least not without permits or without permission. So that's our challenge is that there's so many spaces that should be natural, should be kept uh, and allowed to grow the way it's supposed to. And um, it's being maintained by people who are disconnected. One thing that people can really do to help uh, the environment, especially here in Southern California and Baja California, is to no longer use smudge sticks, especially if you buy it. We still have a relationship with white sage, but it was originally a food source where we were able to gather seeds and other parts of the plant for food. And we can no longer do that because uh, the demand for smudge sticks increased so much that white sage is now being poached from our original gathering grounds. White sage should always be a gift given openly after growing it and having a relationship with that sage. If you're buying it in bundles, you are not receiving that blessing and you are appropriating our culture because you're exploiting our plant. I think it's important for people to understand, coming from my community, a Tiat society, coming from a canoe family, our most important resource is our ocean. The ability to travel between our mainland and our islands, especially Catalina Island. And unfortunately, we're not able to fully uh, embrace our maritime culture as traditionally we would because of our inability to do our crossing. A lot of our inability comes from the fact that our oceans are so contaminated, not only the acidity in the water that affects our canoes, which are made of redwood, which are made of natural resources, but also the fact that um, we have barges crossing through our waterways, our traditional freeways, how we get to th cross through the water to get to our islands. And it also affects our ability not only for us to take our canoes out, but also for the safety of our paddlers themselves. I'm Bob Ramirez and I am the president 
of the Gabrielano Tongva Springs Foundation, which is uh, the entity that was created 30 years ago in order to preserve and protect, restore and revitalize Kuruvuna, the ancient village where we're sitting here on. And our goal is to educate the people as well about the Tongva, because this is a place where uh, Kuruvungna means place where we gather in the sun. So we want to create, recreate the idea of a village where everybody is welcome and they can help and participate in the uh, cleanup of the site, the maintenance of the site, the restoration, and learn about, about the ecology here and the native plants and animals and how they're woven together. So when they go back to their own homes and they go forward in life, they have a deeper understanding of the value of, of native people, native plants, native creatures, the entities, the relationships that we have that are based right here on this piece of land. So it's an educational, environmental, and cultural uh, endeavor that we have here. And this was for thousands of years a village inhabited by our people. And the descendants are still here and we still feel I think in our hearts when we come here, we feel a connection. That's why we're all here. I think we know this is our home. And even though we can't say we own it, because what does that mean? We do own it. This is land back. <laughs>